Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. The title of my sermon this morning is When New Life Ripens in Us. In the Gospel today, we hear the story of Mary and when she heard the good news that she would give birth to Jesus. Are we ready to hear the good news of Jesus' birth this Wednesday at our 4 p.m. Wednesday Christmas Eve service? This past year, we here at St. Francis Church have been surrounded by new life. And to get us ready to celebrate the new life of Jesus on Christmas Eve, I thought we would take a minute or two and have a little practice run and celebrate other forms of our new life around us. I thought we could show each other all the new life that you and I are grateful for as a congregation. So I'm going to make you work a little bit today. I'm going to ask you to stand when I announce each group and then I would ask you to stay standing. If you joined St. Francis Church in the last two years, please stand. And if you want to see the names of all the others who have joined St. Francis, make sure that you open up the voices this week, where we have a list of all the new and returning members. If you are a member of a new ministry like Senior Produce Market, Heart and Soul, Northridge Elementary, or other new ministries, please stand. New members, keep standing. <laughs> keep standing. Celebrate the moment. If you're serving for the first time on Vestry or have a new leadership role, please stand. We have experienced new life with our brothers and sisters from Christian community. And in January, we will also welcome the Living Church of God. Jim, might I ask you to stand and represent Christian community for us? Thank you. Thank you. If you had a child, grandchild, great-grandchild, or great-great-grandchild, please also stand. <laughs> Beautiful. If you moved into a new home or had major renovation to your existing home, please stand. Come on. Floor space, floor space counts. <laughs> if you visited a new place for the first time, please stand. I know some of you are already standing, include. And if you experienced other forms of new life that I couldn't possibly know even as your priest, please stand. And if you're excited about this new life in our congregation, let us clap. Thank you for humoring me. We experience lots of new life and joy in our ordinary lives as Christians. As happy as we are when we experience new life, we will experience joy with the coming of the Christ child. The new life that you and I have experienced these last few years is nothing short of amazing. You and I have much to celebrate. This past week, Bishop Marion Buddy, the diocesan bishop of Washington, wrote a blog post on the difference between happiness and joy. Bishop Buddy wrote these words. Joy doesn't depend on external circumstances or good fortune, nor is it something that we can pursue. Joy comes to us often in unlikely times and places. She continues, happiness, writes the spiritual author Frederick Beekner, turns up more or less when, you're expect, when you expect it to. A good marriage, a rewarding job, 
a pleasant vacation. Members of the congregation working hard to become vital. Joy, on the other hand, is as notoriously unpredictable as the one who bequeaths it. One would expect joy at a wedding, but it can be equally palpable at a funeral. One would hope for joy on the perfect Christmas morning, yet it can also come to us in the loneliness of imperfection, when nothing turns out the way we hoped it would after an argument and even in a jail cell. Joy is a gift that God gives, and with it, a deep sense of being at home in an imperfect world. There is some work in being happy. Your vestry has done a lot of work to bring new partnerships to our congregation. And each of you have every Sunday made efforts to welcome new people to our church community. We all have a part in who we are becoming as a church through the new life we celebrate. Bishop Buddy wisely teaches that this Christmas may or may not be a happy Christmas. For the Tognazi family, the Jost family, and the Copy family, it will be the first Christmas without their cherished loved one and for us too. However, I pray all of us will experience a joyful Christmas. Joy is not dependent on external circumstances. Joy comes to us through our faith, through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and through grace. To receive this joy, we have to be open and available to receive God's joy as our gift. Like Mary and Elizabeth, we need to be open to the miracle of new life that is about to come into us, once again through the birth of Jesus. And you, the people of St. Francis, know about being open. It is your mission to have open minds, open hearts, and open hands. In the days ahead, let us listen beyond the happy words of Christmas carols and hear the joy conveyed through the miracle of the Christmas story. As the words of our Advent lighting proclaimed this morning, may our hearts be softened by the stories of Christmas season that we hear and make the miracle of Christmas more real to us. In the days ahead, may our hands be ready to deliver the compassion of God and Christ to our world. Now, many of you, particularly old timers, but new timers too, but before my arrival, remember and recall the presence and leadership of Reverend Janine Chinon, a former member who just a few years ago became a priest and now is at my parish where I was sponsored for ordination, All Saints Church Pasadena. It's a small world. You give up one, you take one. Let us not forget the new life of ordained ministry that came out of this parish. Oftentimes, bishops talk about congregations that raise up people for ordained ministry as vital congregations. So hold on to that. Hold on to that belief. All through Advent, every day of Advent, almost every day, she apologized yesterday for missing a few days, Janine has been posting to her Facebook poems that reflect the waiting of Advent and the anticipation of Christmas. Yesterday, she posted a poem by Rumi called, As Ripeness Comes, and the words of the poem go like this. 
What soul's desire arrives? We are standing up to our news in the sacred pool. Majesty is here. The grains of the earth take in something they do not understand. Where did this come from? It comes from where your longing comes. From which direction? As ripeness comes to fruit, the answer lights a candle in the chest of anyone who hears. Most people only look for the way when they hurt. Pain is a fine path to the unknowable. But today is different. Today, the quality we call splendor puts on human clothes and walks through the door, closes it behind, and sits down with us in this companionship. The poem complements Bishop Buddy's reflection on the difference between happiness and joy. You and I are happy for all the new life around us. And I think that you and I yearn for the joy of Christ. To echo the words of the poem, our souls desire joy. To embrace joy, we must make a journey from both the presence and the absence of happiness. Happiness alone will not teach us the way to welcome the joy of the newborn King Jesus, unless we make a journey of the heart you and I will not understand or even recognize the joy when we receive it. The poet Rumi has an insight that joy ripens in us and does not just appear. We all have access to this kind of joy when we invite Jesus into our lives through quiet prayer. I see Jesus as our companion in those final words of Rumi's poem. Joy sits down with us every day when we invite Jesus, our companion, to walk with us every day of our lives. If we let Jesus touch every part of every day of our life, the joy of Christ will ripen in us. When our happiness becomes our celebration of Jesus' joy, then our world will begin to change. Our world does change when you and I have the glimpses of this joy of Christ and not merely the happiness of the world. The fruit of our companionship with Jesus really requires no work on our part, none. Indeed, we need to stop working and just sit like Mary at the feet of Jesus with the open minds and hearts and hands of the people of St. Francis. And when we do so, then we will love our neighbor as Jesus loves his friends and those who follow Jesus. When we do so, justice will roll in and the hungry will be fed as the Song of Mary beautifully proclaims in the Magnificat, said in morning prayer and evening prayer around the world, and words of the Magnificat are essential to the anticipation of Christmas that is our Advent. God bless you.